I'm repeating that, please. Didn't you hear my answer, Dr. Hardy? Yes, but I want to make sure that my adjustments are correct. The possibility of isolating protactinum and subjecting it to a bombardment of neutrons brings into the foreseeable future the development of a weapon much more powerful than the hydrogen bomb. Lily, where did you learn that? The only mention of that problem is in my top secret file there in the laboratory. I worked it out. Lily, we're brought here because of certain claims made concerning your mental ability. Are you aware of those claims? I know what they are. Are the claims justified? They are substantially correct. Yes, I'm afraid they are. I have a little girl, just about your age. Would you wait here, Lily, please? Corporal, just keep an eye on her, please. Mrs. Massner, you should be very proud of your daughter. She is an extraordinary child. Can I... No, no, no. I'm sorry. You'll be able to see her in just a few minutes. Yes. Well, Doctor, is she a fake? She is no fake. That nine-year-old girl has a mentality equal to some of our most brilliant physicists. I questioned her about her background. She could read and write when she was a year old. At two and a half, she was doing quadratic equations, and now she can carry on a conversation concerning mathematical concepts that I have difficulty in following. Well, how do you account for it, Doctor? I can't account for it. Maybe she is a mutation due to proximity to radiation. Maybe she is an evolutionary time switch. And I can tell you this, every claim made about the girl is substantially correct. She has a level intelligence way beyond all existing standards. Well, that's enough for me. General, I'm ready to make my recommendation to Congress. Do you know what Congressman Bulmer's committee is suggesting? No, sir, I do not. Doctor, the committee considers that child a national resource. She has the brain to figure out a foolproof defense against guided missiles, a plan to increase weapon production, to lick bottlenecks. And we propose that she be kept here for that purpose. But Congressman, she's still a child. You said yourself she had intelligence beyond all existing standards. Well, she has, but she's still a child. She has to have the human relationship of a child, the environment of a child, all the security and affection that a growing girl needs. Security? She'll be under 24-hour guard. That's enough security for anybody. And as far as affection goes, if she does her job well, we'll all love her. What about her mother? Leave that to me. Hardenstein, get the heads of the departments together. I want all... All existing problems ready for our presentation to Lily Massler at four o'clock this afternoon. That's all for now. I don't understand. Can't she help you in the way that you want without your keeping her here? She's just a little girl. Mrs. Masner, your daughter is not just a little girl. Surely that has been made clear to you. You'll have to face the facts, ma'am. Your daughter is a free... Well, not in the usual sense, Mrs. Masner. No, indeed. As a matter of fact, you should be extremely proud of Lily. Why, she has the opportunity of doing the national defense, one of the greatest single services ever performed by an individual. May I talk to Lily, please, Mr. Fong? If she really wants to... Get the kid. General, please... Get the kid. Get... Yes, sir. Lily, will you come in here, please? Lily, do you know what these men want you to do? They want me to stay here and advise them. Do you want to? Wouldn't you rather come home with me? Home to Daddy. Mother, I know you won't understand this. But I'd rather stay here. Lily, Lily, listen to me. You are an intelligent girl. You realize that the child of your age still needs her mother. You're not being scientific, Dr. Hardenstein. You're being emotional. Just because you have a daughter of my age, don't let yourself be guilty of false reasoning. It is obvious that I have no further need for my parents. Never. Any more than you have further need for your parents. Well, now we're in business. Oh, you won't regret this, Mrs. Masner. Lily, are you sure? I'm sure. Goodbye, Mother. Uh, Mrs. Masner, I'll drive you into town. Chairman, 
recommend that it is necessary to reassemble the protactotron so that the positive ions to be accelerated are introduced at the center of the D system, where they are repelled by the positive D1 and attracted by the negative D2. Thus the ions are accelerated across the gap between the Ds and pass into the electric field-free region within the interior of D2, where they are unchanged by the subsequent change in the voltage between the Ds. But Lily, that means the ions will be slowed down. Not if the electrical potential is reversed at this point, Doctor, and D1 becomes negative and D2 becomes positive. That'll be all for today, General Gates. Yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> uh, yes, uh, Lily. Uh, you're excused, gentlemen. That's all. Well, Lily, we're getting there. We're getting there. In the six weeks that you've been here, we've accomplished more than we have in the last couple of years. But listen, I've never brought this subject up before, but I would like to know. All the head doctors in the country have broken out into print about why you are the way you are. Now, I'd like to know your opinion. Why do you think you're such a deviation from the norm? There is nothing to be gained by giving you that information. Now, just a minute there. You may be a big brain, but I'm still the commanding officer here. And when I give an order or ask a question, I expect an answer. An accurate answer. Politely tender. Is that clear? Neither is there anything to be gained by taking this childish attitude, Gates. Why, you little shrimp, I could have you court-martialed. I could also take you across my knee. Do just then. Nothing. Well, something knocked me over that stool. What did you do? I merely suggested it to you. Suggested it? Precisely. I could have suggested that you jump out the window. It's 12 stories down. But that would have upset the time patterns. The time patterns? Certainly. The patterns by which the future may be calculated. Now, just a minute. Do you mean to say... That you can foretell the future? With reasonable accuracy. It's simply a matter of applying the past rhythm to the future rhythm and determining which of the possibilities is the correct one. Never mind that. If you can foretell the future, then you can foresee military attacks, right? Of course. Do you know of any? Any attack on us? I do. Soon? Very soon. Well, in heaven's name, Lily, tell me when. Who? I won't. You won't? No. I will do nothing that will alter these time patterns. This is rank insubordination. No. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. All right, stop. Well, Doctor, do you think she's bluffing or don't you? Can a person foretell the future? Gentlemen, up to now, science has believed the future to be the result of an infinite progression of probabilities, with the added factor of a complete randomness. If Lily has discovered a pattern to that randomness, yes. I think it's logical to believe that she can foretell the future, and I wish she could. What do you mean by that? General, for almost ten years I've been the head physicist here. My work has been entirely in the field of atomic development. And by atomic development, I mean this bomb, our latest achievement, A-33. Capable of a thousand times more destruction. Uh, we are we... aware of the power of A-33, Doctor. What has that to do with it? Congressman, I am a scientist. Science is life. I am a student of life. This is death. The only way we scientists can force ourselves to work with death is not to think of the probable results of our work. And now comes along a little child. 
equipped with the power to look over our shoulder and say to us, I can tell you precisely and exactly what the result of your work is going to be. Don't you understand? I don't want to know the exact precise result of my work. I very much prefer not to know it. Doctor, that girl's got information concerning an imminent attack on this country, and she's holding out on us. What I want to know right now is what she's not telling us. Now, I don't care how you do it, but get in there and find out. That's all, Doctor. Get busy with it. Come on, Bomber. i got a lot of other things to talk over with you. I'd like to speak with Lily for a few moments alone. Well, Lily, how are you feeling? I'm very well, thank you. I've been reading your book, Science the Savior. Do you think science will save the world, Doctor? Lily, have you any information to the contrary? That means you've been talking to General Gates. I'm not going to tell you what you want to know, Doctor. It's a waste of time to ask me. Now, Lily, you are too good a scientist to be guilty of false conclusions. It is not what I want to know. It's what I have been instructed to find out. You know that I have a little girl just about your age back in Massachusetts. I think I mentioned that before. Yes. What's her name? Amanda. I haven't seen her for... Almost two years. That's too bad. You should have seen her while you still had the chance. Meaning, meaning that I no longer have a chance? You were planning to visit her for Christmas. Yes, how did you know that? Of course, your time rhythms. You mentioned Christmas. This is August. Are you saying that within four months... I'm saying nothing. But you inferred it. Inference has value only when supported by demonstrable facts. I like you, Doctor. You're the only one who hasn't treated me like a freak. Please don't ask me to tell you things I mustn't tell you. Lily, why are you withholding this information? You must understand how important it is. Now, didn't you read in this book, Chapter 7, the section on humanism and science? Yes, I read it. Are you practicing it now? Science is life, you say. Are you helping to progress life? Are you... More than you know. By refusing to tell us about this proposed attack so we can prepare for it and save lives. And how would you prepare for this well, attack? What we... No! I'll tell you. You would prepare for it by striking first. And then the enemy would retaliate. And then you would strike again. The weapons would become deadlier and deadlier. The suffering and the destruction would become greater and greater. Soon the earth would be completely uninhabitable. Science, instead of being the savior, would become the destroyer. The time pattern I foresee is horrible, but not so horrible as it would be if I told you when and by whom you will be attacked so that you could strike first. Who are you? Will you tell me that? Where did you come from and what has made you? You made me, Doctor. Science made me. The discovery of how to split the atom and make destructive weapons of a size and power never before contemplated made me. I'm a direct evolutionary product. Like the man who invented the wheel. He was born because he was necessary to the survival of humanity. Are you a necessary product for humanity's survival? I am. The use of atomic energy has made knowledge of the future indispensable to survival. I have that knowledge. I and a few others. There are about 20 of us scattered over the face of the earth. In the destruction that is coming, no more than 150 million people 
will be left living on the earth. We 20 will be among them. We will survive. And when the fighting and the dying have finished, and when the diseases and the plagues that will follow have finished, we 20 will set about rebuilding the world. Lily, listen to me. Not as a scientist, but as the father of a little girl about your age. You let me know so I can protect the man. I can't do that. I, I, I'll not reveal the information. You mustn't ask me to do that, Doctor. It isn't safe. How can you be so hard? You made me what I am. People who make bombs know why they're making bombs. You helped us. You showed us how to make deadly a bomb. I have increased your ability to destroy yourself. That is all. I have hastened the process, knowing that my effectiveness cannot begin until yours is over. And my daughter. You have sacrificed your daughter. I can tell you only to what extent you've sacrificed her. Tell me, please. Lily, you must. You must tell me. Did you get anywhere? Yes, I got somewhere. Well, Doctor, what have you to tell us? Congressman, do your Christmas shopping early this year. Against it. I am dead set against it. To inject Veramine into that child? We are not asking your opinion, Doctor. We are asking facts. Now, this Veramine is supposed to be able to get the truth out of a stone. The question is... Will it work with yes, Lily? Yes, it will work, but the drug is erratic. Might have very dangerous after effects. Might impair her intellect. Hang the after effects. All I want from her is the truth. I agree with the general, doctor. We must take this risk. I am sorry, sir. I must refuse to give her the injection. You refuse? I do. Are you aware that I'm giving you an order? I do, and I refuse it. Well, we'll see about this. Corporal, in here, please. Corporal? I want Lily Masner given an effective dose of veramine immediately. Veramine? Doctor, are you sure that's safe? You heard the order? Yes, sir. Just what happened? Certainly. It was anticipated. Why didn't you avoid it then? To do so would have been to alter the future. Never mind that. You know what we want from you? Yes. Now give us the answers then. Is there an attack imminent? There is. When will it come? Not less than 40, no more than 52 days from today. Less than two months? Good Lord, Gates. Who will win? Nobody will win. This war will enter country warfare, as it will dissolve all financial, linguistic, and religious barriers. But Lily, what about, what about survival? Will I survive? Will any of us survive? I will survive. What about the rest of us? You 
will not. Give them enough information. We'll survive and win, too. Now, stop hedging. Tell me everything you know. Who's launching this attack? Within 24 hours, we'll have enough planes over them to wipe them off the face of the earth. You will not wipe them out because you will not know who they are. Oh, yes, we will. You can't hold out on us now. You know the effectiveness of Baramine. Baramine is very effective. In another minute, my intellect will be temporarily reduced to that of an average child. It will be a long time before it regains its present level. But it will not again be needed until the time comes to rebuild from the rubble you will make. Last, you who don't give me that baloney, you can't stall us anymore. Now I want to know who's making that attack or I'll break your neck. Tell me, who is it? Ah! Who it is. Oh, my mama. What is the matter with her? I told you the drug was dangerous. It's gone. Her reasoning power is gone. She's just a little child now. Just like Amanda. What? Listen, you. Oh, my mama. What are we going to do? Who can help us now? No one can help us now, Congressman. All we can do is to stand here in a darkened room and watch a little child crying. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.